on our planet. There are a couple of different kinds of ice. There's sea ice, and that floats on top of the ocean. It's what covers most of the Arctic Ocean. It also rings the Antarctic continent. And it's, you know, five to seven meters thick at the most, depending on how old it is and how many times it's crashed together. Then we have ice that's actually so thick that it's sitting on the ground. And that's like the ice that covers the entire continent of Antarctica and the entire subcontinent of Greenland. And there the ice can be up to, oh, two miles thick. As our planet warms, the polar regions are warming faster than anywhere else on our planet. The ice sheets are changing, they're melting, and they're sliding faster towards the edge of the ocean. What that means is as we put more ice and more melted ice into the global oceans, global sea level is going up. And we expect it to go up faster as more of the ice melts. All the homes and all the economies and ecosystems that are tightly linked to coastal places are going to be impacted as sea level goes up. And to be able to adapt to this change, we need to understand how fast and how much sea level will go up in the coming decades. We know the ice is changing at both poles from three independent measurements. One is we measure the top of the ice and we can see that the ice is moving faster. Places it was moving a decade ago, it was moving maybe two miles a year. It's now moving four miles a year. We see places where the velocity has doubled so it's going faster. In those same places, we measure where the top of the ice sheet is. This is using a different instrument from space. And there we can see the ice sheet is dropping because ice is kind of like silly putty. When you pull it, it stretches and gets thin. So when it goes faster, it stretches and gets thin. Then the third measurement, we can actually measure how much the ice weighs from space. So in those same places where it's speeding up and dropping, it's losing mass. We can see that both in Greenland and in West Antarctica. When I first went to Antarctica, which was in 1985, when I was a PhD student here at Lamont and with a team of researchers, we flew a P-3, a big submarine chasing aircraft from South America to the tip of Antarctica. We would see ice everywhere. We could look on the bottom and see seals on ice. But we also one day saw a giant crack cutting across a piece of floating ice that's the size of Rhode Island. It really worried us. But when we called back and said we saw a giant crack, nobody really cared. And it wasn't until around 2000 when that piece of ice disappeared between January and February in one winter here, summer there, that we realized that these big pieces of ice were changing as the global temperatures rose and as the ocean around them warmed. When Larsen B broke up, it was the first piece of global change evidence that was visual enough that it could be on the New York Times. And it really made all the scientists go, oh, my goodness, these things that haven't changed for thousands and thousands of years can disappear in a couple weeks.